Welcome to the Mount Zion Prayer Call. We pray that your needs will be met and your prayers will be answered. Now please join Bishop Walker and the entire Mount Zion family as we go to God in prayer. Oh, this is the day the Lord has made and we are rejoicing and we are glad in it. I'm Bishop Joseph Walker III of the Mount Zion Church here in Nashville, Tennessee, and I want to welcome you to the most powerful 15 minutes on the planet. We're excited about what God is getting ready to do even in your life, and I pray that you are excited as well. Listen, I want to thank all of you who are all for the very first time. It means a lot to us to have you share with us. Be a lot of places this morning, but you've chosen to share with us on the prayer call. And of course, always those of you who share every single week, we thank God for you. And we've been fasting and praying and believing God for specific areas of our lives and some goodness for our conference uh, in four weeks in full gospel in July. We certainly been praying, thanking God for that. Do want to thank God, Amen, for. Uh, all of the prayers and God is just really so faithful and I want to just give him glory and praise I absolutely want to uh, thank God for last night we had a tremendous time at the mayoral forum it was just powerful and I just truly truly hope you got a chance to get out and hear about it and uh, to really hear the candidates yourself which is really informative and really dealt with a lot of specific issues about our community so we appreciate those of you that support that and make it happen. Uh, I look forward to you also sharing with me tomorrow in Bible study, Understanding and Overcoming Temptation. This will be a word that will bless your life. I'm going to deal with that. And uh, let it be a blessing to you. I hope that you will be able to uh, be there and stripping your faith. And then, of course, on Sunday, my goodness, we're going into part three. Uh, keeping your head straight. If you were there this past Sunday, you know how God moved. We've been talking about I've been hearing tweets about bow now, bow later, helping this world understand that every knee shall bow and every tongue will ultimately confess that he is Lord of Lord and King of Kings. I still want you to support Elder Talaferro's radio show. It's so awesome. I'm so proud of him. So go to there to his uh, Twitter, I am Talaferro, and you can uh, follow him and get information, download the free app, Yes Lord Radio, and support what God is doing to this awesome man of God. So proud of him, and uh, let's just continue to, to, to push that and uh, make sure that folks support it. I am grateful today for those of you that post your prayer requests on the prayer wall at theprayercall.org and know that we are praying for you. Go there sometime and post your prayer requests or pray for others, and uh, it will truly, truly be a blessing. Uh, to us all. Today I want to share a word uh, that I believe is going to be a blessing to your life and not tuned in by accident today, but God has a word for you. Uh, in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 17 through 19, these words you'll find, although the fig tree shall not blossom, and neither shall fruit be on the vines, uh, the labor of the olive tree shall fail and yield and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herds in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me to walk upon my high places. To the chief singer on the stringed instruments, hear the powerful word. Uh, that Habakkuk gives us. I want to talk about it's your time for a turnaround. And I just believe that God is a God of timing. He, God, everything that he does, he does in specific seasons. And when you understand God's timing, it, it creates within you a sense of patience, a sense of uh, resolve, you're resilient. Uh, you trust him and you realize that God is always working behind the scenes. You're on this call today, and uh, you know, you've been that person that you've waited patiently, and you've trusted God, and you've come to that place the Scripture calls due season. And uh, the Spirit of the Lord is saying, uh, all of what you've gone through, now it's your time for a turnaround. And, uh, and what you have to do is you have to learn how to live in the world, how to respond knowing that this season is about to manifest. There are things that are getting ready to happen in your life. My God, I've just felt it in the spirit that are getting ready to open up for you. And I want you to start learning now how to position yourself 
and what God is doing in this process uh, of all the things you've gone through, what God has done and set you up for the great season he's about to walk you into. Uh, I want to first of all suggest you have to be poised for expectation, meaning that you have to come to a place where you recognize that even though things may not be happening or haven't been happening the way that you felt that they should, the scripture says that, you know, the, the fig tree does not blossom, uh, the vines uh, don't have the fruit. This kind of goes on saying all the things that should be happening are not happening. Uh, but uh, a child of God, knowing what God is committed to do, uh, has been poised for expectation. Even though those things have not been happening, that something within us still believes that something is going to happen. Uh, you know, in other words, it's gotten so bad now, the only place it can get is better. It's gotten so low, the only place it can go is up. You're poised for expectation. You ought to go through life today to say that I'm expecting something to happen. I'm at a place right now where everything that could go wrong is already gone wrong. And so, God, I'm, at the point I'm not going to believe that this is my demise. I'm going to believe that this is for my development. This is about helping me get to a place where I'm expecting your next move, to know that you're about to do something in my life. Today, I speak it over your life. Don't look at all the things that are not happening in your life, but poise yourself. Expect God to do what has not happened. Believe God for those things that are getting ready to manifest in your life. Or the devil would have you chronicle, or this isn't happening, and that ain't happening, and this is not happening, and that's not. But the devil is a liar. Change your language and say, this is about to happen. This is about to happen. This is about to happen. The power of life and death is in your tongue. Today, I want you to begin to speak it over your life. This is about to happen. I'm about to get the car. I'm about to get the house. I'm about to get the job. I'm about to be healed. I'm about to be delivered. Begin to expect it, even in the sense of knowing that the situation currently may not be what you want it to be. And what, what, what Habakkuk says is so profound because he says, even though those things may not be happening in verse 17, he says in verse 18, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join the God of my salvation. And isn't that powerful? Because he says, I'm going to praise God in any environment. I can tell uh, how, what you're expecting by how you're praising God. The environment may not be conducive. The environment may be contrary to what you believe that you believe in God for. But your praise uh, represents maturity when you can praise God in any environment. Listen, anybody can praise God for the traffic jam in the driveway, the things are going well, that they've got money in their pocket. But not many people can truly praise God when things are looking, you know, gloomy. Things are not looking as you would have them to be, but because their convictions are so strong and they are believing God and expecting great things to happen, they say, I praise God in any environment. I trust God no matter what. That's what I do. I'm telling you today, people of God, you've got to learn today how to praise God in any environment, whether you're up, whether you're down, whether you're in, whether you're out. you got to say, Lord, I, I'm going to just rejoice in you and you're the joy of my salvation because the idea now is that I believe that God is going to bring me out. Joy is internal. And when I have a revelation that God has in the past saved me, brought me out, delivered me, I don't have to wait until he does it again to give him glory. I'll give him glory right now for what he's about to do. Oh, my God. But, you know, through what you've gone through, let me tell you what happens when you're poised to expectation and you know how to praise God in any environment. Do you know what God is doing? This is how you know it's about to turn around. The Bible says, watch this, the Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like high and steep and make me to walk upon high places. God has prepared you for the next level. Through all the things you've gone through, the reason why there's been a delay because God was working on you, making your feet like high and steep, giving you the ability to climb steep terrain. You see, there are levels that God's about to take you to, but he had to strengthen you. He had to prepare you for it. Oh, yeah, God could have just said, go get it now, but he knew that you weren't ready. And so what God had to do was temper you, allow you to go through the frustrations, the setback, to go through so that now you can trust him and have the strength and resolve to navigate it about what he's about to take you. It's your time for a turnaround. 
And man, some of you are about to go places that eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has in store for those who love him. I come to speak it over your life today. Go on and climb up to the next dimension. You've been prepared for this. You've been prepared and God's about to release it over your life. You've been prepared for it. And God knows he can trust you. Today, this is the word of the Lord for the people of God. And I declare it once again. It's your time for a turnaround. To God be the glory. I want you to come into agreement with me right now. Let's pray. Let's trust God right now together. Father, I thank you and I bless you for being such an amazing God. You are so awesome. Thank you for sending your word in the lives of your people today. I pray, God, that right now, regardless of what it may be with might, they will continue to expect things to get better. Help them to praise you, the daughters of the environment. And, oh, God, thank you for preparing us for what you're getting ready to take us into. It wasn't easy, but we thank you, God. It didn't feel good, but we thank you. Today, oh, God, I pray for that person who's sick. I pray for that person right now who may be dealing with other issues that, God, you would just touch them and let them know that it's their time for a turnaround. God, we thank you that you're moving in Kairos, not Kronos. It's not our time, but it's your time. That, God, you have the ability to step in and change situations instantly. And we give your name the glory and praise that it shall be. We thank you for what you're going to do, God. You're amazing and awesome, God. And so, Father, right now, we just pray for that you would just bless your people. We pray now for every person on this call, every church representative, every pastor, every leader. We thank you right now for our conference as we get ready to go into full gospel in four weeks. We pray, God, for a successful conference that every leader we met in the lives of your people. We pray, God, even now, God, that you would just continue to do that great work in and through your people, God, that you will be glorified in all things. We thank you and we bless you that it's already done. In the mighty name of Jesus, we speak it now. It's our time for a turnaround. Amen. Well, I thank God for all of you today, and I just want you to know I love you and I appreciate you, and I pray you will join me in Bible study tomorrow. Get there, get there. I want to see you. Come shake my hand. Say, Bishop, I was on the prayer call. That would bless me. Also, on Twitter, make sure you tweet, hey, uh, at Mount Zion uh, Nashville, MT Zion Nashville, or at Joseph Walker 3. And so I can see it at Joseph Walker 3, hashtag MT9 prayer call. Let me know what the prayer call said to you today. If you on Instagram, do the same thing. Let's flood the timeline this morning to let people know. You should have been on the prayer call today because it is your time for a turnaround. I thank God for you today, and I look forward to what God's going to do. Uh, even on tomorrow Bible study and Sunday in worship, I love you. Thank God for you. May the Lord bless you real good is our prayer. Thank you for joining the Mount Zion Prayer Call. We pray that you will continually be blessed.